Our story begins on a plain and completely unremarkable homestead. It was home to a most ordinary family, unsophisticated and somewhat naive Mikola, his simple and hard-working wife, their dog Polkan, their cat Barsik. Their lives were commonplace, absolutely nothing remarkable about them. They went fishing in the spring, with quite the catch to show for it. They gardened in the summer. The land was fertile, the harvests always good. In the fall, the harvest in, they liked picking berries and mushrooms in the forest. Oh, how they loved jam with their tea, salted mushrooms and boiled potatoes. They went skiing in the winter. The snow and frost were perfect. But one day, Mikola and his wife were watching a TV show about warm, far-off countries. The sea was clear, the beaches white. And that's when Mikola's dream was born. He decided that he and his better half would visit those foreign seas, where they would rest from their daily troubles, see the world, let the world see them, and add a little flavor to their humdrum lives. From that point on, Mikola was beside himself day and night, trying to figure out how to earn enough money for his dream. Suddenly, an idea dawned on him. Practical, if uh, a bit risky. With complete confidence in his plan, Mikola decided to go to the bank, take out a loan, and buy seed. The bank bought in. The loan was his. The collateral, his homestead. Mikola walked out of the bank, brimming with joy, bills peeking out of his pockets. Thrilled and exultant, he dashed over to the market to buy seed. Mikola got to the market and spent everything he had on the most expensive high-yield seed there was, according to the seller. Back home, he and his wife lost no time plowing the soil and sowing their new seed. Sprouts burst out across the field, bloomed and grew stronger. Mikola and his wife couldn't have been happier. They could just taste their trip to the warm sea, feel those foreign lands. But their dream was not to come true. Mother Nature had other plans. The summer was unusually rainy, and the entire crop died. Their dreams washed right away. It's hard to put into words the pain and disappointment they felt, what they went through deep inside, the thoughts that ate at them. They couldn't understand why fate had played such a mean trick. Mikola despaired. He didn't know what to do. The money had to be paid back. Time was ticking. The bank was insistent. He was going to lose his homestead. Fear and despair hung upon Mikola. Sad thoughts bothered him. A sudden call from the bank disturbed Mikola even more. They decided to remind him 
that the loan repayment terms were inexorably approaching and there was very little time left. After the call, Mikola completely lost heart. He wished he could gather his thoughts and come up with a way to earn some money to save the homestead, but how can one think in such a situation? I should go take a walk in the forest, Mikola thought. It's quiet and calm there. No one and nothing will disturb me. Maybe if I gather my thoughts, I'll come up with something sensible. Mikola wandered around the forest for a long time in hopes that something would cross his mind, but he couldn't come up with anything. Oh, just look at this poor old fellow. It's time to return, Mikola thought, but I need to answer the call of nature before I head back. Right when Mikola approached the bush, suddenly he noticed something strange. He even cheered up a bit and, forgetting about his natural needs, began to push the bushes apart. Whoa! Well, I'll be, Mikola said. It's an oil pipeline. The abandoned oil pipeline I read about in the newspaper. I wonder if the pipe is empty, thought Mikola. And at that moment, he came up with a grand plan. Without thinking twice, and without wasting precious time, Mikola pulled up his pants and went back to the farm to grab his tools. He got a bucket. He took his hand drill. Its bit was lying somewhere around. And here is the drill bit. He also needed a hose.
he found the hose. Well, it seems like I got everything I need, Nicola muttered to himself. Now I can go back to the forest, to the pipe. Oh, and let me grab a corn cob, thought Mikola. I'll have something to chew on while I'm walking. Mikola is walking through the forest, chewing on the corn comb, thinking that maybe his fate was not really that bad to him. Maybe there actually was something left in the pipe that he could pump it out and sell it to get some money and pay off his loan. Mikola took his drill and began carefully drilling a hole in the pipe. With trepidation and excitement, Mikola inserted the hose into the hole and, oh joy, to his surprise, precious black gold poured right into the bucket. I was right, he thought. Even though the pipe is abandoned, it still has some oil in it. Mikola filled the bucket, plugged the hole in the pipe with the corn cob, and went back to the farm. Mikola was walking back to the homestead, barely dragging the heavy bucket and thinking, What am I going to do with this wealth? Suddenly, his natural ingenuity and acumen returned to him. He decided to try to refine the oil into gasoline, using his moonshine still. After all, it's much easier to sell gasoline. Mikola returned to the homestead and, without wasting time, went straight behind the barn, to the clearing where he had the moonshine still hidden, which he secretly used to make excellent moonshine. Wow, that was quite a walk, Mikola muttered, with tiredness in his voice. Mikola poured the contents of the bucket into the can and went to make fire in the furnace. we 
Mama, there is no axe. Oh, what a rattle brain. I was in the barn a moment ago and didn't grab the axe. Well, you can't chop wood without an axe. He'll have to go back to the barn. By the way, there are no matches either, so he'd better not forget to take them too. Oh, here's the axe, Mikola said. And there were the matches. It's time to go back. Bicola chopped some wood and lit the fire in the furnace. Feeding the wood to the fire, Bicola was thinking of a good way to sell the gas. He couldn't take it to the fair. It could cause some unwanted questions. And then he remembered that when Jegush, his brother-in-law, came to visit, he said that he had purchased a car, and a car needs gasoline to run. In the meantime, the oil was successfully produced. Mikola took the bucket and went straight to his brother-in-law, who lived across the river. When Mikola reached the bank, he saw that the ferryman wasn't there. Well, it looks like he'll have to pull the ferry himself.
As Mikola was turning the lever, he recalled how Zhegoz talked about a dog he got after some kids got into the habit of stealing carrots from his garden. That dog turned out to be very mean. So Zhegoz told everyone to keep a good distance away from his house or the dog would eat you whole. And for anyone who wanted to meet him, meet Zhegoz. Uh, I mean, not the dog. He set a bell near the riverbank. If you rang it three times, he would hear and come. Mikola rang the bell exactly three times, as his brother-in-law had told him to. Mikola didn't waiting. have to wait long. Jegosh came right away. They both were delighted to see each other. They haven't met for almost a year. They chatted a little about this and that, and then Mikola got down to... He said that he had some high-quality gasoline for sale at a bargain price. Zhegosh was quite interested in Mikola's offer. Great gasoline and cheap. He gladly bought it and asked for more. Mikola too was glad that he had managed to sell the gas and promised to bring more of it soon. They talked a bit more, then said their goodbyes. Zhegosh went home and Mikola in high spirits went back to his homestead. Nicola went back happy as a clam. He was inspired by the fact that he had managed to sell the gasoline so easily. Now, Nicola thought, I can pay off the loan and save the homestead. Nicola's head was full of grand plans. Oh, Mikola did not even suspect what dangers and surprises his fate had in store for him. When Mikola returned from his brother-in-law, the first thing he did was to put his gasoline money into the piggy bank secretly from his wife. He decided not to tell her about his new and very dubious way of earning money just yet. Because, if he told her the truth, that would be the end of the whole affair. His wife would surely start to worry, ask questions about where the money had come from, and so on and so forth. Maybe she'd even make a scene. So Mikola decided that he would definitely tell her everything, but only after he saved up enough to settle the debt.